Hi friends, my name is Nandita. I am from Andhra Pradesh. Children, let us discuss the need of classification. Since the dawn of civilization, there have been many attempts to classify living organisms. It was done intensively, not using criteria that were scientific, but drawn out of a need to use organisms for our own use, for example, for food, shelter, and clothing. Aristotle was the earliest to attempt a more scientific basis for classification. He used a simple morphological characters to classify plants into trees, shrubs and herbs. He also divided animals into two groups, those which had red blood and those that did not. In Linnaeus time, a two kingdom system of classification with plantae and animal kingdoms was developed that included all plants and animals respectively. Now let us see the living organisms need to be classified because of the following reasons. First one is to study of one or two organisms is not sufficient to know the essential features of the group. All kinds of organisms do not occur in one locality. The third reason is classification helps in knowing the relationship amongst different groups of organisms. And the fourth reason behind of it, it helps in knowing the evolutionary relationship between organisms. Children, based on the users, so the classification can be divided into five types. The types of classification depends upon the types of system of classifications. Organisms are classified into first the following kingdoms. First, they introduced two kingdom classification system, and this was in introduced by Linnaeus who was the father of taxonomy system and he divided all the living organisms into two kingdoms in 1758 and these are plantae and animalae. Now let us see which organisms comes under plantae. The plantae consists of algae, fungi, bacteria, bryophyta, petridophyta, smarmatophyta and in animalae Cylenterata, Porifari, Platy Helminthes, Molluscas, Nymanthi Helminthes, Annelida, Echinodermata, Chordata. Later on, they distinguish the futures of pla Kingdom Plantae as the following. In Plantae, the cell wall is absent and a big central vacuole is present and uh, they absorb inorganic nutrients from outside. An ultimate growth can be observed and well-defined growing points also be observed in Kingdom Plantae. Kingdom Plantae undergrows for autotropic mode of nutrition and reserve food in the form of starch. No locomotion except in some lower algae. Absence of excretory organs, nerve system, sense organs and muscular system. And they perform slow response to external stimuli. Now let us discuss the futures of Kingdom Animal. The characteristic futures of this kingdom are the following as and they have the absence of cell wall, inorganic crystals are not present in their cells, central vacuole is not present and these undergrow for the process of heterotropic mode of nutrition. The growth is limited and well defined growing points are not present and these reserve food as glycogen, excretory organs, nerve system, sense organs are present, locomotion is present, muscular system is present and they show quick response to external stimuli. Now let us discuss the objections against two kingdom classification system. The two kingdom classification system was accepted for a long time. However, some difficulties arised from this classification as several new living organisms has, have been discovered. Some of these difficulties are mentioned as below. The first formed organisms were 
neither plants nor animals fungi do not show similarities with structure physiology and reproductive system of plants it is not easy to recognize the lower organisms as plants or animals for example euglena has mixotropic dual mode of nutrition while sponges are fixed branched and irregular creatures like plants smile molds a group of fungi are wall less in vegetative phase they develop cell wall in the reproductive phase smile molds can neither be placed in fungi nor plants liches are formed by the symbiotic association of an algae and a fungus they neither resemble plants nor animals prokaryotes do not have an organized nucleus they have a single envelope organization and absence of spindle apparatus meiosis and sexual reproduction eukaryotes have a well defined nucleus a double envelope organization spindle apparatus meiosis and sexual reproduction on the other hand viruses have no protoplasm and metabolic machinery of their own therefore all of this cannot be kept in a single group unicellular uh, algae like diatoms euglenodes dinoflagellates and protozoa resemble each other these are the some objections of two kingdom classification system later on they developed three kingdom classification system and this was developed by arndt hickel in 1866 classified living organisms into three kingdom and these are plantae protista and animalae the new kingdom protista included all those organisms which lack the capacity of tissue differentiation there are algae fungi and protozoa later the kingdom protista was reserved only for unicellular organisms let us discuss the limitations of three kingdom classification limitations of three kingdom kingdom classifications are prokaryotics and eukaryotes are not separated both unicellular and multicellular organisms are kept in protista after some changes again they introduced four kingdom classification the four kingdom classification system included monera in addition to protista plantae and animalae studies with electronic microscope made it clear that bacteria and related organisms have a different nuclear structure as compared to others there are prokary- prokaryotes those the kingdom monera was created by copland in 1956 fungi continue to remain with plantae in this system later on they developed the five kingdom classification system the five kingdom classification system proposed before 1969 the classification system for the living organisms have undergone several changes over the time the kingdoms defined by him were named as monera protista fungi plantae and animalae the main criteria for the classification used by whitaker included cell structure body organization mode of nutrition reproduction and phylogenetic relationship the characteristics of five kingdom classifications are follows characters like cell type is consists of in monera prokaryotic protista eukaryotic plantae eukaryotic and animalae eukaryotic cell wall no cellulose is uh, present in it and protista cell wall is present some fungi cell wall with it uh, chitin and plantae cell wall is present in cellulose from and animalae it is absent nuclear membrane is absent in monera and it is present in protista and it is absent in fungi and it is present in plantae and animalae body organization cellular uh, organization is formed in monera protista is also cellular organization comes to fungi it undergoes for multi cellular or loose tissue and plantae undergoes for tissue organs and animalae undergoes for tissue organ and organ system now let us see the mode of nutri- nutrition in this kingdom monera undergoes for autotrophic mode of nutrition protista undergoes for autotrophic mode of nutrition fungi undergoes for heterotrophic sepro 
saprophytic or parasitic and plantae undergoes for autotrophic or photosynthetic animalae undergoes for heterotrophic comes under holozoic or saprophytic etc Now let us discuss the merits of five kingdom classification. The merits of five kingdom classifications are Euglena and other transition types which had been included both amongst plants and animals are given proper place under kingdom protista. Fungi have their own biochemical, physiological and structural organization. They have never been related to plants in this system of classification. Fungi are separately placed a separate kingdom of prokaryotes include monera has been created moneras differ from all other organisms in their cellular reproductive and physiological organizations the five kingdom classification system is based on a cellular organization the mode of nutrition and complexity of structure these were the basic factors used in the earliest two kingdom system of classification the system shows the gradual evolution of early organisms into plants and animals. The plant and animal kingdoms are more homogeneous than they were in the two kingdom system of classification. Now let us discuss the demerits of five kingdom classification. The demerits of five Five kingdom classification systems are animal protozoans have been included in the kingdom protista which also included unicellular plants. They show different modes of nutrition. Yeast are tough unicellular eukaryotes do not belong to kingdom protista. Later on sixth kingdom, kingdom system was introduced and it was introduced by Karel Rose, a professor in the Department of Microbiology, the University of Illinois in 1990. This, this system is also named as three domain system as it in organisms are classified into three domains that are Archaea, Bacteria and Eukarya. It mainly used the basic principles of five kingdom classification but divided the monera into two domains that is Archibacteria and Eubacteria and other eukaryotes into third kingdom. This is the figure of Kingdom classification is divided into two categories. One is super kingdom prokaryota and another one is super kingdom eukaryota. Comes under super kingdom prokaryota consists of archibacteria and eubacteria. And again this eubacteria consists of all bacteria forms separated as archibacteria. And kingdom eubacteria again comes under bacteria and kinobacteria. Now let us look into super kingdom eukaryote super kingdom eukaryote again it divided is into four groups protista fungi plantae and animalae protista consists of microalgae phytoplanktonic phytoplank smile molds protozoa fungi consists of microfungi and macrofungi plantae consists of microalgae bryophytes petridophytes gymnosperms angiosperms Come to animal a kingdom animal a invertebrates and vertebrates. This is uh, about six kingdom classification system.